Richard, a horrible morning for anything to do with Europe this morning. Equities down, bonds up, uh, currency collapsing. Um, is it a, one of those normal summer events where people just wake up and decide Monday morning they don't like it for no particular reason, or is there something more serious going on, do you think? Well, in, in Spain, which has had the worst hangover of the lot this morning, I think it's particularly clear that it's the culmination of the recognition of several different themes and the realisation that we're a week away from Europe just packing up and hitting the beach or going on holiday if it can afford to. And th those three themes would be that you've got the banks expect that need a bailout and expecting one, finding it seems to be bogged down in, in German approvals and things like that. So it's not going to happen until after the summer break. Because on the face of it, they're going to get their money, right? They're going to get their that money. It's a while away. Exactly. And so it's a timing problem and the clock is ticking and the banks are being left to hung out to dry over that period. So that's one thing. The other is that Madrid or Spain Inc. faces a huge maturity train smash in about October, 27 billion that it needs. Now, it may be able to divert some of the money out of the bank bailout into that, but it's a question of getting the dinero in its mitts and actually dealing with it. So that's another thing. Then, then there's just more background bad news. The banks are actually reporting higher non-performing loans. That's the bad loans as a percentage of their overall book. That's up to 9%, so nearly 1 in 10 bad loans in Spain. And the other thing is the government, and it's, it's linked, is saying actually there's going to be no economic growth until 2014. So that's a terrible thing, isn't it, from a bank point of view? Because you can make estimates of a bank's book value, but if the fundamentals of, of the assets in the balance sheet are still deteriorating, you, you're always behind. Precisely. You? I mean, subjectively, it looks really great. It looks, oh, fantastic, price to book, let's climb in. And instinctively, you'd want to be getting in now. But there are just way too many uncertainties. And these are partly structural. So you've got the EU bailout not happening fast enough. So you can't trust when that's going to happen. You can't trust the government because the government keeps on saying these are our growth forecasts and then they keep revising them. So they're living in cloud cuckoo land. And then you've got the banks saying these are our, this is our estimate of where property values are going. And even the regulator saying, do you know what? We think that banks are better provided a bit more. So everyone needs to stop living in this state of denial and actually start telling the truth about values. And then only then I might even think of putting a, a euro into a Spanish bank. So just quickly, last question. I mean, these banks now are, uh, have come down a long way. Is there any hope that those share prices reflect um, underlying asset values, do you think? Well, I don't think we've finished going down just yet. I and mean, the backdrop is too grim for words. You've got unemployment at 24%. So all the macro indicators are going the wrong way. Um, exporting enough stuff, well, some pockets of, of great performance, but generally there isn't enough for those banks to keep getting that pre-provision thumping operating yeah. profit coming out. And, and so reservations all around, I've got cold feet. All right. So uh, too early to dive in, you think. All right. Thank you very much, Richard.